Hi everyone, I'm back from my lunch break. So, now it's time to meet the devil in the dark. <laughs> Alright. Enterprise arrives at the Pergia mining colony on Janus 6 to help the colony deal with a creature that has killed 50 miners and destroyed equipment with a corrosive, with strong corrosive substance. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy meet the, meet the mine, meet with the mine supervisor, Chief Engineer Vandenberg, Apo, and an, Chief Engineer Vandenberg and Engineer Apo, who describe the, the amorphous creature and its behavior. During the briefing, Spock's attention is drawn to a spherical object on Vandenberg's desk, which Vandenberg dismisses as a worthless silicon nodule, saying that there are thousands of them in the mines, and that they are a mere geological oddity. Suddenly, they are alerted to a problem in the colony's main nuclear reactor and find its guard killed and the main circulation pump stolen. Chief Engineer Scott rigs a temporary replacement that will prevent a, a critical failure, that will prevent a critical failure, but a more permanent solution must be found in 48 hours. Kirk and his team begin to search for the creature. Spock, suspecting the creature may be a silicon-based life form, modifies their phasers to be effective against it. They encounter the creature, which has the appearance of molten rock, and fire upon it, breaking a part of it off. The creature flees by burrowing through the, through the rock wall at a rapid pace. Spock analyzes the fragment and confirms the creature is made of silicon. He deduces that it is able to burrow through solid rock by secreting the same corrosive substance that has killed the miners. They adjust their track to scan for silicon-based life and confirm that the creature is the only such life form for miles. Spock advises the captain that killing what appears to be the only one of its kind would be a crime against science, but Kirk believes that the creature has has proven too dangerous to keep alive. A sole non-essential personnel are evacuated from the colony before the temporary pump fails. Kirk and Spock continue to search for the creature, happening upon a chamber containing thousands of the silicon nodules. The creature arrives, causing a cave in that separates Kirk and the creature from Spock. Though Spock now urges Kirk to kill it, Kirk observes the creature has not attacked him, instead of presenting its wound to him. Spock finds a way around the cave and joins Kirk, observing the creature. Spock attempts to mime over the creature, but is in far too much pain to complete. Though Spock is able to learn that the creature is called a Horta, the Horta, having gained some knowledge of them from the meld, is able to etch the words, No Kill I, into the rock, demonstrating some sentience. Spock attempts a second meld, and learns that the Horta race dies out completely every 50,000 years, save for one individual that remains alive to protect their eggs. The Horta, through Spock, tells them the, tells them the location of the stolen pump. Kirk has Dr. McCoy beam down to try to heal the Horta while they recover the pump. Vandenberg and the remaining miners threaten to attack the creature when they see Kirk and McCoy caring for it, but Kirk explains it was only protecting its eggs, the silicon nodules they have found. The miners fear that thousands of Horta could hatch and ravage their colony, Kirk convinces them that the Horta are sentient and only want to be left alone. He offers the possibility that in exchange for leaving the Horta alone, they could get the Horta to help them locate more valuable deposits within the rock. Vandenberg agrees to the idea, and the Horta, not fully healed through McCoy's application of thermal concrete and speaking through Spock's mind meld, also agrees to this plan. The pump is installed and the colony restored to normal. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy return to the Enterprise and prepare to leave orbit and learn from Vandenberg that the eggs have hatched and already the new Horta have found them rich veins of Pergium and other rare metals. He adds that the miners are, are learning to overcome their instinctive aversion to the Hortas. Spock remarks that the mother Horta felt similarly about humans, though she apparently found his pointed ears quite attractive. <laughs> well, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, let's look at the production moments of the story. The Horta was played by stillman and acrobat Genos Prohaska, who also designed the costume. Prohaska was promised that if he created something good enough, the producers would rent the costume and pay Prohaska to play the part. Episode writer Gene Kuhn was convinced of the creature's was, was convinced of the costume's effectiveness, effectiveness after an impromptu demonstration by Prohaska in the studios. William Shatner says this is his favorite episode of the series. His father died during its filming, but Shatner insisted on going through with the production and felt closer to the cast and crew for helping him through the difficult time. Aww. Well, a pretty solid story with a decent message. I give The Devil in the Dark five warp cores out of five. Well, join me next time I see the first appearance of a certain alien race that'll give Kirk and company some, well, trouble for years to come. 
an errand of mercy. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.